Here. Reverend Campbell. Mr. Gilstrap. Here. Mr. Jones. Here. Vice Mayor Miller. Here. Mr. Raleigh. Here. Mayor Saunders. Here. Mr. Schultz. Here. Mr. Vogler. Here. Please stand for the invocation. Remain standing for the pledge. Tonight, given by Council Member Buddy Raleigh Jr. Thank you. Let us pray. Uh, Father in heaven, we thank you again for another day and your gift of life. Uh, we thank you for this time of year. It's just uh, a time of new beginnings, of new life. Uh, we just uh, pray your blessings upon us. Be with us tonight as uh, we make decisions uh, for the citizens of this great city. Uh, we just pray that you'll always put your hedge of protection around our men and women who protect us around the world. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and, and to, to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilman Raleigh. I'd like to invite Mr. Steve Kaler, President, Boys and Girls Club, to come down, please. And I do have a, a proclamation. And it reads, whereas the young people of Danville are tomorrow's leaders, and many such young people need professional youth services to help them cope with a wide range of social and financial hardships. And whereas the Foster Street Unit of the Boys and Girls Club of Danville is providing services to more than 250 young people annually. And whereas the Boys and Girls Club of Danville is, the, is in the forefront of efforts in academic success, healthy lifestyles, and good character and leadership, and whereas the Boys and Girls Club organization is our state help ensure, in our state, help ensure that our young people keep off the streets, offer them a safe and supportive place to go and providing them with quality programs. And whereas the Boys and Girls Club of Danville will celebrate National Boys and Girls Club Week along with some 4,100 clubs and more than 4 million young children and teenagers. Now, therefore, I, Sherman M. Saunders, Mayor of the of Danville, do hereby proclaim March 22nd, 28th, 2015 as Boys and Girls Club Week in Danville and call on our citizens to join in recognizing and commending the Boys and Girls Club organization for providing comprehensive, effective services to young people in our community. Given under my hand, the 17th day of March, 2015, Chairman and Founders, Mayor. Thank you. Congratulations. Please feel free to ask the remarks. Mr. Mayor, uh, this is Don Jeffers, our, our, our Youth of the Year wow. nominee. Uh, also with us tonight, we have Sheila Williamson Branch, who is a board member, and Brandon Atkins. We also have another young member, Ms. Coleman, uh, as well as two staff members, Rosalie Maxwell and Diane uh, Gill. Will you uh, all come down as well? I think some remarks may be made and stand with uh, your president. Uh, I just want to thank you all for this time this evening. The Boys and Girls Club does do, I think, a tremendous job for this community. 100% of the students that we work with, the young adults, graduate and move on to the next grade. 100% of the students and young adults that we work with graduate as seniors and go into the workforce. I think when you think about uh, what we do for this community, for the school systems, and for the young adults that we serve, it is a tremendous uh, service to this community. Uh, so I want to thank you for that. Um, and, and, and the last thing, I think in the last year, the, the uh, students and the young adults themselves have started giving back to the community. Uh, a Keystone Club, a club within the club was formed, 
and they are doing uh, volunteer service organizations like uh, God Storehouse and other other areas of the community. So it's coming full service. The people that are helping them are now being helped uh, by the young adults that we serve. But uh, the, the, these are our board members. They're the ones that do the heavy lifting as well as the staff. But thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Danielle Jeffers, and I've been a Boys and Girls Club member for seven years. Again, like he said, I'm also the Youth of the Year for the Boys and Girls Clubs of the Danville area, and I represent them well, and I'm proud to be able to represent them. Please come and join our Danville Club, our Chatham Club. Come visit. We'd love to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Okay, anyone who wish to speak on matters not on the agenda will be heard at this time. If you wish to speak on any agenda item, you will be heard when the item is considered. Anyone wish to speak? Anyone wish to speak? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor Saunders. Good evening. Good evening. Um, you and the City Council, uh, Mr. King and members of the staff. My name is Davis Montgomery, and I'm a district manager for Duke Energy. Uh, my purpose for being here tonight is the same as for past meetings, to be a resource to the council and the community, to provide you with updates on relevant topics, and to answer your questions. It's going to be very brief tonight, so I don't have a whole lot to report, so I'll, uh, I'll get to it. I'll begin by talking about a few uh, news articles that you may have read or may have heard about. At my last appearance here, I believe I told you about an agreement, a proposed agreement, and let me underline proposed agreement that we have with the U.S. Attorney's Office that provided for $68 million in fines and restitution and $34 million in community service projects and mitigation. What I can tell you tonight is a meeting has been set for April 16th in Greenville, North Carolina, uh, and Mayor Saunders and members of the council, that is for the purpose of discussing and again, let me underline the proposed agreement. So we'll all be watching that date to see what comes out of that, uh, potent, out of that meeting. Uh, the next thing that I have for you is a recent announcement that the North Carolina Department of Environment and Natural Resources, this is the North Carolina equivalent of Virginia DEQ, recently fined Duke Energy Progress $25.1 million for seeps at their Sutton plant, which is outside of Wilmington, North Carolina. We have, of course, 30 days to take a look at that and to have some sort of response back, of one of which may be an appeal. But we, have, uh, we are not aware of any impacts to the groundwater in the Sutton plant area that has not already been addressed. And we have monitored the groundwater around the plant and the ash basins since 1990, and we regularly turn those results over to our state regulators. But we have 30 days to take a look at this notice and to respond. One of those options, of course, is to do an appeal. Uh, moving on to something that's a little bit different. This is on related community projects. The Rockingham County Community Foundation has made its announcement about recipients for its first grant cycle. The Rockingham County Community Foundation received one of the $250,000 seed grants from Duke Energy, and this is their first grant cycle for awarding some of those grants. They have come up with nine awards, which total $163,547 of the original $250,000. Uh, these grants are for a variety of projects spread, about the, spread around the county, and you'll see more about those in the coming days. On something very close to that, the Community Foundation of the Dan River Region, uh, this is also one of the recipients for their Riverbank Fund of one of the seed grants of $250,000. They will close their first grant cycle on the 20th, two days from now, three days from now. So I think the effort there is they have gotten some good responses, but there's still time for people to submit a grant application if they'd like to do so. And then the last thing I have to report to you on is that the Duke Energy Water Resource Fund, as a reminder, this was the $10 million multi-state fund that we created for water-related projects, is about to announce the recipients of their first round of grant uh, applications. And I want to say, without overbilling it, that this was a robust I guess would be the right term, a robust grant review process. We had over 71 applicants for, uh, for grants in that first round. Our intention is to allow this money to uh, continue to, to do projects for more than one year. Uh, out of the 71 applications, we approved 14. Uh, the original 71 applications accounted for about $5.1 million. 
The 14 that we approved will account for just about $1.1 million. So it was a very robust uh, grant application cycle and process with those committee members meeting and clarification and, and really honing in on what these grants were and what they were trying to achieve. And hopefully you'll be hearing more about that in the days to come. But there's still a couple of grants that that number may change a little bit because there's a couple of grants we're still pending some additional information. So that number may go up just slightly. So wanted to report to you folks on that. And ladies and gentlemen, that's, that's really all I have for you here tonight. Question, yes. comment from Mr. Montgomery? Uh, Mr. Vice Mayor. Yeah, there was criticism about the $25 million award. It was a fine for Duke Energy, but there was no requirement to actually stop the leaks or stop the seeping, or uh, do we assume Duke's going to take action to do that? Or, I mean, they weren't, there was no requirement. This was criticism by environmental groups. There's no requirement to stop the leaks. You just got a fine for having them. Yes, sir. Much like the uh, agreement, the proposed agreement with the Attorney General's office, since this is in a judge's hands, I'm fairly restricted on what I can comment on that because we don't want to appear to be making any sort of influence on that one way or the other. Um, it has some criteria with that notice, uh, Vice Mayor Miller, uh, some of which we think may be covered by the Coal Ash Management Act that was recently passed so that it may be mitigated already through those actions as opposed to additional actions. But, Without me getting myself in any sort of hot water here, let me kind of retract from that and just say there'll just be more to come as we kind of review this and have, uh, have some sort of response back to it. And I'm, I apologize. That's really all I can say at this time. Another question or comment? Mr. Bogler. <clears throat> Again, I just want to reiterate what we said at this last meeting, that there was not a locality that was affected more than Danville was uh, negatively impacted more than we were and that um, to please keep that in mind as these discussions and negotiations ongoing that this council expects and demands to see uh, response and when you all told us that you would make it right duke energy said that they would make it right over a year ago that that is what we expect and uh, as the mayor mentioned at our last meeting we're we're ready to start seeing that action thank you thank you i, I appreciate else? that mr vogel and just a brief response as we we absolutely agree. That's the purpose for my being at these meetings, is to continue that dialogue and that communication. Uh, and as I communicated last time, we are absolutely ready to work at the pace that the city is ready to go at. So thank you for that. Other questions or comments? No, just remember now it's 14 and a half months. Yes, sir. Uh, it's actually been over, uh, Vice Mayor, it's actually been over two months since the last time we had a meeting. Okay. <clears throat> thank you, but, sir. Thank you very much. I thank appreciate you. your time as thank always. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on any item not on the agenda? Yes, sir. Good evening, Mayor Saunders. Good evening. Welcome. Members of Council, City Manager King, it is good to be with you this evening. For I think everyone up there knows who I am, but I am Ed Paul Hamas, Chairman of the School Board for Danville Public Schools. I also have with me this evening our vice chairwoman, and she is also the chair of our budget committee, Ms. Terry Hall, and board member and member of the budget committee, Mr. Stephen Gould. We are here this evening um, because yesterday at a meeting of our budget committee, uh, discussion turned to the articles that were in the newspaper over the weekend, and we were a bit concerned that there may be some misunderstandings or there may have been some faulty communication, and we want to clear the air on that. So we asked at that meeting yesterday if our staff could pull together very quickly a recap of the events that have led to the current uh, capital funding uh, request that we have presented to City Council. So each of you has received tonight a one-page recap of those events and we would uh, respectfully submit to you that we have been working consistently over the past uh, 15 or 16 months to make sure that we have the right information to counsel at each step along the way. Um, I will mention that we will be available during your work session. I know you have an extremely busy schedule, but if you want to uh, ask questions, that might be an appropriate time. I can also tell you that I believe we've now locked in the date of Tuesday, April 14th for our next joint meeting. And um, while a few individuals may not be able to make it, we look forward to having a more robust discussion, certainly that evening. But nothing between now and then is off the table. Please don't hesitate to 
contact us at any time in any way. We are uh, doing our best to be totally cooperative and very positive in our relationship with council. We appreciate very much your ongoing support and we trust that we can work together for the good of the school children of Danville Public Schools. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Anyone else? Thank you. The motion to approve meeting, uh, our meeting minutes of February 17, 2015. Their motion to approve. Mr. Jones, second by Mr. Raleigh. Discussion on the motion. Madam Clerk. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Mr. Gilstrap. Aye. Mr. Jones. Aye. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Mr. Raleigh. Aye. Mayor Saunders. Aye. Mr. Shanks. Aye. Mr. Vogel. Aye. On the consent agenda, the following budget amendments, item B through D, have been discussed by City Council and introduced for first reading. Be further considered by City Council in public hearing. After the public hearing has been closed, be no separate discussion on these items and they will be enacted by one motion. If discussion desired by a council member or a citizen, the item will be removed from the consent process and considered separately. I open the public hearing. Anyone wish to speak? Anyone wish to speak? Close the public hearing. Council, your pleasure. Mr. Gilstrap. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, I move adoption of the consent agenda items B through D. Okay. Anybody want to pull any item? Okay. Is there a second? Okay, Mr. Raleigh. Uh, Madam Clerk. Reverend Campbell. Mr. Gilstrap. Aye. Mr. Jones. Aye. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Mr. Raleigh. Aye. Mayor Saunders. Aye. Mr. Shanks. Aye. Mr. Vogler. Aye. Mr. Buckner. Aye. New Business Federation of approving a resolution providing more <laughs> obligation from the City of Danville to cover a refinanced loan. Uh, Mr. Vogler. Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt a resolution approving and authorizing execution of a moral obligation agreement by and between the City of Danville, Virginia and American National Bank and Trust Company. A second. Is there a second? Mr. Shanks. Okay. Discussion on the motion? Madam Clerk. Mr. Gilstrap. Aye. Mr. Jones. Aye. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Mr. Raleigh. Aye. Mayor Saunders. Aye. Mr. Shanks. Aye. Mr. Vogler. Aye. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Third from adopting an ordinance amending your 2020 land use plan from MR, PSA, and SSR to NC and rezoning from suburban residential to neighborhood commercial. I open the public hearing. Anyone wish to speak? Anyone wish to speak? Close the public hearing. Council, your pleasure. Uh, Mr. Vogler. Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt an ordinance amending the year 2020 land use plan from MR, PSA, and SSR to NC parcel ID numbers 04532003185839. And 58169 and rezoning from SR Suburban Residential to NC Neighborhood Commercial Parcel ID numbers 58395 and 58169, otherwise known as Grid 1816, Block 009, Parcels 000019 and 00019.001. Would you read that again, please? <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> Second by Mr. Raleigh. <laughs> Discussion on the motion. Madam Clerk. Mr. Jones. Aye. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Mr. Raleigh. Aye. Mayor Saunders. Aye. Mr. Shanks. Aye. Mr. Vogler. Aye. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Mr. Gilstrap. Aye. We're adopting an ordinance rezoning from Old Town Residential to Attack Residential on the west side of Stewart Street. Open the public hearing. Anyone wish to speak? Yes, sir. Your name, please. Yes, sir. Keith. My name is Keith Walden. Welcome. I'm the developer of Stewart Street. And um, we've, we've been here several times. We're here tonight just to try to get approval for the zoning. We have uh, tried to work with the neighbors and uh, you know, done everything we can do to try to make this project work. So we're here just to answer any questions that we need to answer. Any questions for Mr. Walden? How's the communication gone with the neighborhood? It's gone good. Okay, I know there was some question last time, just wanted I, I, everybody to follow up on that. Several of the people I've talked to have agreed to support the project now as opposed to do not support it, so right. I think we're good. Okay. 
Thanks, Mulgoy. Yeah, not so much a question, just a comment in that the last time that you were here, we decided to send it back to Planning Commission so some of these issues could be worked out between you and the neighbors. And I've actually heard feedback from some of them and uh, has been very positive. And I know some of the things that, that we had asked and that they had asked you have been um, more than willing to talk to them about and made some changes and, and did everything essentially that, that you know, that we had asked and most of the neighbors had asked. So I want to thank you for, for being willing to do that and what looks to be a great project for our city. So I support it. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Jones. Not only did you meet with the neighbors, but you also took out time to call us individually. I know that you and I spoke, and I just want to commend you for that, giving me updates on what was going on with the neighbors. And I, su I completely support this. A lot of times we ask people, have you spoken to people in the neighborhood? Have you gone back? And I know this has been kind of tough for you, but you've done all the right things. And well, it's, it's, it's been a good learning process for me as well, so we, it's, all, it's all been good. Appreciate you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Vice Mayor? Yeah, I, I too was pleased that you went back and talked with the surrounding people. Sometimes that can solve a lot of problems, and uh, in this case, apparently it has. So I think this is a good thing. I think it's a good project. It's in a good place. It not only will benefit hospital, uh, a lot of our residents uh, come and stay for three or four years probably will take advantage of it. People at Avert will take advantage of it. I think it's a project that's well needed. Yes, sir. So uh, I'm pleased that you went back and talked with the people and uh, worked out most of the kinks. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Hi. Welcome. Uh, I've been told I'm now a celebrity. I mean, I see people at IHOP and they say, oh, I've seen you on TV. But I'm Melanie Vaughn. My husband and I, Kevin, live at 235 West Main Street. And from the, at the very beginning, you know, we were totally opposed to the rezoning. But over time, we've met with Keith and we've, we feel that compromise comes from both ends. And we think that he's planning something very nice. And in the spirit of the study, the Buki study, um, for us, one of the key components of this is that this will be the first development within the city limits of Danville, new development in many, many years. This is in, so, so whatever is decided, that, ha that we feel that really needs to be in the forefront of everybody's mind because this will set the tone. Hopefully Keith will do more developments <laughs> that will benefit Danville. But this is the first. And so the cul-de-sac and whatever, you know, it's all up to you guys, but we feel that he has made compromises and we have as well. And we're excited about where this can lead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? There you go. Yes, ma'am. Welcome. Hello. How are you? Um, again, I'm Shelby Clark, and I live at 227 Montague. Um, I would just like to state that I have not talked to Mr. Walden, and um, that's probably where this is going as I tell you <laughs> how I feel about this, not to be a negative Nancy, but. Um, the project has been condensed and at the last planning and zoning meeting the question and statement was made that we are seeing less against this project and more neighbors moving towards accepting this project. Well, as that may seem the case, um, and I am the last woman standing, <laughs> that is all because the larger piece of this project is no more than 30 to 40 yards from my backyard. Um, I wish I had a map here to show you, but I don't usually zone in and plan is really good about having that for us. But, um, literally, the parking lot is going to be no more sure. than 30. Sure. Oh, thank you. I didn't know you were going to need it. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Um, as you see, this parking lot right here, that's no more than 30 to 40 feet, not feet, I'm sorry, 30 to 40 yards from my backyard. So I will have all the extra noise. Um, I will have the monstrosity of the three-story apartment in my line side of view. Um, as I stated with, uh, at the zoning and planning, um, that this project may not have an effect on the value of my home, but it will affect the marketability 
of my home is I'm already beside a three-story apartment building. Um, I have talked um, and even got the guidelines for the buffering that will be done around the, the property um, if, if this goes. And I don't even think that that's going to be enough to buffer the line side of view with the way the land lays. Um, now that this project has now turned and the two apartment buildings are went from the top of the street to the bottom of the street. We started off with a very dense project and it was very overwhelming and then as each person was picked at about which part they didn't like and everybody got what they wanted, of course now the plan is that the apartments have landed directly almost behind my house. Um, <clears throat> I have also stated my concerns of cutting off Stewart Street and allowing a cul-de-sac. This would divert more traffic on Montague Street that has more than children, 22, I'm sorry, 20 children currently residing on our street, playing on our streets, out in the streets in the afternoons with basketballs and skating and skateboards and bicycles. And if you ever have the opportunity on a nice day, you will see all of those children out playing on our street. Um, we already have issues with speeding drivers, street parking that does not allow two cars at once um, to pass and near misses of children at play. And this cul-de-sac will also add to the traffic on West Main. Once this project would fill, the amount of traffic would put stress and I see the cost of a traffic light in the near future. I'd also like to point out that not once, but twice, Mr. Walden has stated that the cul-de-sac was a deal breaker. And we notice now that the placement of the apartments in the current plans are dead center in force of a cul-de-sac. If I recall correctly, it was also stated um, here that there was a concern uh, for the cul-de-sac, if not from one, but two of our council members. Planning and zoning placed restrictions on this project, and I would like to see that follow through here if City Council decides to pass this. If you do pass this, pass it as the plan stands. No surprises, no extras. Finally, I would, as I would like to see new growth in our city, and as you would like to not turn down projects such as this, as a citizen, I would also not like to see a desperation for a project to move forward at the expense of the taxpayers, my neighborhood, and of course myself. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else wish to speak? Anyone else? Close the public hearing. Councilor Pleasure, Mr. Jones. Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt an ordinance rezoning OT-R, Old Town Residential, to A-R, Attached Residential, vacant parcels on the west side of Stewart Street, parcel ID numbers 20596, 20597, 25672, 22841, 24958, 25085, 25226, 22099, 25069, and portions of 25070, otherwise known as grid 1719, block 005, parcel 000001-00009, and portions of 00010 and 0011 of the City of Danville, Virginia Zoning District Map. I don't have the nerve to actually read that again. <laughs> Second, Mr. Gilstrap. Discussion on the motion. Uh, Mr. Shanks. Yes, Mayor, I just, uh, I wanted just to make a couple comments. I was, I was one of those councilmen who was concerned about this project. And, uh, and I, I have to say that what has happened here is what's supposed to happen in good zoning uh, uh, cases. As city council had asked for further review, some things got changed on the plan. Not everything, not all the concerns, but there was an honest attempt for peace in the valley and mostly received peace in the valley. There's still, there's never going to be 100% uh, support for, for any kind of new development in the, these days and times. Uh, and, and I did want to address a couple of issues that, that were discussed here tonight, and one being the traffic on Montague. Uh, I, I really, the, the traffic that is on uh, Stewart Street right now is uh, is minimal and and uh, I really don't see there being impact on Montague from this project, particularly since it's not a through street as proposed here. Uh, I still have some concerns about 
West Main Street, but the city engineer and the city staff has assured us that it's not a problem. So, uh, so those are the two biggest issues remaining in my mind, and, and I just wanted to compliment the developer in, in reaching out, seeking peace in the valley, and doing the best it can to work with the neighborhood. And I'm going to support the project. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Vice Mayor? Yeah, I was one that brought up the thing about the cul-de-sac or block street. It's, it's not, I can see the point of not having through traffic there, but I think you need an exit out the back, a safety exit or some way to get out in case of emergency. I, I was looking at apartments up in the north where my daughter lives in Philadelphia in the suburbs and all these, no, nobody was building cul-de-sacs anymore. Uh, but the problem is just like over in Pantag, if you block that street off on Main Street, there's no way out. Or there's no way in for emergencies. I think at the very least you ought to consider putting some kind of emergency exit out the back where street can be opened in case of emergencies. Uh, secondly, I'd like to ask Mr. Gilly, is it the time to ask him questions? Yes. Come forth. Okay, the traffic study. I'm, I'm sorry, excuse me, Mr. Vice Mayor, I do apologize. Uh, yes, you, you are, you're in order, correct. Is that in order? Okay, the traffic study. I don't see how the traffic study was relevant at this time. Uh, the problem's going to be when there's more traffic and more people living there. Is there a possibility you'll do another traffic study? I think you're going to need a traffic light at that intersection coming up from Central Avenue. And when there's more traffic, uh, you know, just to do a traffic study right now, there's not much traffic down Stewart Street unless there's a funeral going on. And I don't know if the day you did the study there were funerals going on. That increases the traffic. But the fact is, once you get a number of people, a large number of li living in there, there's going to be a lot of traffic at that intersection and then you're going to have accidents. So I would strongly urge you to keep in the back of your mind do another traffic study in the future and not just say, oh, it's not a problem, it won't be. I think it's going to be. I drive up that road daily, and I think if you add extra traffic coming opposite Central Avenue exit, you're going to have problems, you're going to have accidents, and you're going to need a traffic light. Tube counts are done approximately every two years, so that's where we have the, the history of data especially showing the numbers on West Main Street and the steady decline that we've had. So we will cons consider doing counts. I mean, it's automatic that the Main Streets are counted every two years. We'll look at Stewart Street once the development occurs to see if there's any additional. So yes, we do have that and it's already programmed in that it's just, we constantly are checking that, those kinds of things. That's when you're going to have the problem. The, to the, say a traffic study right now to me is almost irrelevant. It's not going to show what's going to problem going to be. West Main will be checked in the, the ramp. The ramp is the area that we're having the issue right now. Um, and that's not necessarily a function of this development. It's the opposite side of the street that the ramp is. And we're going to continue to monitor that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Further, further, further discussion? <coughs> Thank you. You call the roll. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Mr. Rawley. Aye. Mayor Saunders. Aye. Mr. Shanks. Aye. Mr. Vogler. Aye. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. We're adopting an ordinance granting a special use permit to allow for a waiver on the minimum district size on the west side of Stewart Street. Open the public hearing. Anyone wish to speak? Anyone wish to speak? Close public hearing. Council, pleasure. Mr. Bogart. Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt an ordinance granting a special use permit to allow for a waiver to the minimum district size in accordance with Article 3G, Section C, Item 22 of the Code of the City of Danville, Virginia, 1986, as amended on vacant parcels on the west side of Stewart Street, parcel ID numbers 20596, 20597, 25672, 22841, 24958, and 25085, otherwise known as GRID. 1719, Block 005, Parcel 00001, respectively, of the City of Danville, Virginia, Zoning District Map. There a second? Mr. Raleigh, discussion on the motion. Okay, sorry, public hearing. I'm confused here. No, that was it. There a second? Mr. Raleigh? Yes, sir. Okay, discussion on the motion. Madam Clerk. Mr. Raleigh? Aye. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Looking at the wrong one, several <laughs> store streets, all of them are store streets. Yeah, I apologize it. for that. Yeah, that is to go. Adopt an ordinance resulting from Old Town Residential to a tax residential on the east side of Stewart Street. Open the public hearing. Anyone wish to speak? 
Anyone wish to speak? Close public hearing. Council of Pleasure. Mr. Shanks. Uh, yes, Mayor. I move for adoption of the ordinance rezoning from OTR Old Town Residential to, to, to AR Attached Residential. Vacant parcels on the east side of Stewart Street. Parcel IDs number 25089, 25089, 25086, 204118, 2508, 2508, and a portion of 2453, 2435, and 2117. Otherwise known as grid 1719 block 4, parcels 18 through 24, and portions of 15 and 17, respectively in the city of Danville, Virginia, zoning map. Is there a second? Uh, Mr. Uh, Butler. Discussion and motion? Uh, Ms. Shanks. Yes, Ms. Mayor, I, I just, uh, again, I just wanted to say the developers worked. He, originally, this, this, well, the previous case was about having originally multifamily housing right up behind the old West End neighborhood. And it, the, the, that case moved the multifamily housing down to the end of the street. This case has, uh, this and the next two cases, are uh, limiting the number of houses that are going in on that particular piece of property. He actually, that wasn't proffered before. He's come up with what he intends to do and we know what it is. And it gives us an idea of how dense the development's gonna be. So I know there was some resistance by several council members about putting this decision off, but I think it was a good decision by council and it gave the developer an opportunity to come up with a good plan. So I just wanted to add that, thank you. Thank you, further discussion? Please call the roll. Mayor Saunders. Aye. Mr. Shanks. Aye. Mr. Vogel. Aye. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Mr. Gilstrap. Aye. Mr. Jones. Aye. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Mr. Raleigh. Aye. The Federation of Adopting an Ordinance granting a special use permit to allow for a detached single family dwelling on the east side of Stewart Street. Open the public hearing. Anyone wish to speak? Anyone wish to speak? Close the public hearing. Council, your pleasure. I'm Shank. Yes, may I move for adoption of an ordinance granting uh, a special use permit to allow for detached single family dwellings in accordance with articles 3.F, section C, item 16 of the Code of the City of Danville, Virginia, 1986, as amended on the east side of Stewart Street, parcel num ID numbers 25089, 25090, 25086, 20418, 25087, 20424, 25088 and a portion of 24359 and 21117, otherwise known as grid 1719, block four, parcels 18 through 24, and a portion of parcels 15 and 17, respectfully, of the city of Danville, Virginia zoning district map subject to conditions. Is there a second? Mr. Bogler, discussion on the motion. Please call the roll. Mr. Shanks. Aye. Mr. Bogler. Aye. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Raleigh? Aye. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Federation of an ordinance granting a special use permit to allow for a waiver of the minimum district size on the east side of Stewart Street. Open the public hearing. Anyone wish to speak? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, I can't hear all of you very well. So I just have a couple of questions, and it may not even be pertinent to this exact vote we had been told that from the traffic study there would be no need for a traffic light and that was a big thing for us on west main At this time. so i don't know if i'm if we're still hearing that or if we're hearing something different um so i have you know i have a concern about that um because that really was one of the basis of us feeling good about this is that we would not have a traffic light on West Main. And then I, I heard also perhaps there would be a need for access through Stewart Street for emergency purposes. I don't know, is that is that something that's voted on or is it just the zoning that's voted on? I mean, where does the cul-de-sac issue and the access issue come into play does it come into play right now, or is that something that is negotiated and worked out when the plans go back to the planning commission? I mean, I don't understand that, and I'm just wondering. 
Your first question was, you understand that you were told there would not be any stoplights. Is that, that there correct? Was from the, that there would be no need, Mr. Gilley told us from the, from the reports, there would be no need for a traffic light. That was the determination of the study. You'd like so, to respond to Mr. Gilley? Pardon me? I'm asking Mr. Gilley to respond to your comment. Okay. I'm asking Mr. Gilley oh, okay. to respond to your concern. Okay. Uh, there is not a need for a traffic light right now. In at this time. Year, at this time. We will continue to monitor it. We do traffic counts on West Main Street every two years. Right now those numbers are showing a decrease. Uh, we would love to see some kind of giant development occur somewhere that would you know, cause those numbers to go back up. But right now we don't see a need for it. None of our studies are showing it. Would so this development, well, this development, this development will not trigger it. The, the numbers that we're projecting are so low it won't have any impact on it. Okay, so we're not projecting the installation of a traffic light there. Uh, I was just telling Councilman Miller that we will continue to monitor it, as we do with all the other intersections here in the city. Uh, the question of a cul-de-sac. The plan, the development plan still has to come to the Planning Commission for them to look at. We don't see the need for a secondary exit. He's suggesting that we do look at it, so there's maybe some other way to have maybe an emergency type driveway or something else that would allow a second access. You mentioned Pine Tag right now, if you're familiar with that subdivision, mm -hmm. if there's a train at the tracks, you can't get to any of those houses. We try to avoid having that situation, but Stewart Street, we could get to it in other ways, even if the main street was blocked off. There are other options, but they, he's asking that we look at that as part of the plan, and we will. Okay. So um, nothing has changed since the, the last meeting. Okay, well then the other thing I wanna say is we, and I think it was at the Planning Commission, maybe the last, this commission meeting, I don't remember, where we had suggested, well, perhaps a first step would be a stop sign. And after d d discussing that with people who really knew what they were talking about, and we don't, we are taking that back. We don't feel that we were told that that would not be a good answer, so we're removing that from our <laughs> list of suggestions. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Anyone else? Hold Bob Gary. Council, your pleasure. Council, your pleasure. I'm Mr. Jones. So may I move we adopt an ordinance grant a special use permit to allow for a waiver to the minimum district size in accordance with Article 3.G, Section C, Item 22 of the Code of the City of Danville, Virginia, 1986, as amended on the east side of Stewart Street, parcel ID numbers 25089, 25090, 25086, 20418, 25087, 20424, 25088, and portions of 24359 and 21117, otherwise known as grid 1719.004, parcels 000018, 000024, and portions of 00015 and 000017, respectively, of the City of Danville, Virginia, zoning district map, subject to conditions. Okay, there's a second, Mr. Raleigh. Discussion on the motion. Please call the roll. Mr. Bokla? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Reverend Campbell? Mr. Gilstrap? Aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Vice Mayor Miller? Aye. Mr. Rawley? Aye. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. The reason we're adopting an ordinance amending the year 2020 land use plan from urban single family residential to multi family residential and rezoning from old town residential to multi family residential on the west side of Stewart Street. Open the public hearing. Anyone wish to speak? Anyone wish to speak? Close the public hearing. Council, your pleasure. Mr. Volker. Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt an ordinance amending the year 2020 land use plan from USR urban single family residential to MR multifamily residential and rezoning from OTR old town residential to MR multifamily residential vacant parcels on the west side of Stewart Street. Parcel ID numbers 23886, 25703, 25542, 20422, 20421, 20420, and a portion of 25074. 25070, otherwise known as grid 1719, block 005, parcel 000012, 0000017, and portions of 0011 and 0010, respectively, and certain vacant parcels on the east side of Stewart Street, parcel ID numbers 24358, 24649. 22513, 22103, and portions of 22104, 
21117 and 24359, otherwise known as grid 1719, block 004, parcel 0000, 12 through 0016 and a portion of 0011, 0015, 0017 respectively of the city of Danville, Virginia zoning district map. Sir, hey. second. Uh, Mr. Gilstrap, discussion on the motion. Please call the roll. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Reverend Campbell. Mr. Gilstrap. Aye. Mr. Jones. Aye. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Mr. Raleigh. Aye. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Bogler? Aye. Federation adopting an ordinance granting a special use permit to allow for a waiver to the minimum district size on the west side of Stewart Street. Open the water. public hearing. Anyone wish to speak? Anyone wish to speak? Close the public hearing. Council, your pleasure. Mr. Shanks? Yes, may I move for adoption of the ordinance granting a special use permit to allow for a waiver to the minimum district size in accordance with Article 3. G, Section C, Item 22 of the City of Danville Code of City of Danville, Virginia, 1986, as amended. Vacant parcels on the west side of Stewart Street, parcel IDs number 23886, 25703, 25542, 20422, 20421, 20420, and a portion of 25074 and 25070. Otherwise known as grid 1719, block five, parcel 17 through parcel 17 through 12, and partial portions of 11 and 10, respectively, and certain vacant parcels on the east side of Stewart Street, parcel IDs number 24, 358, 24649, 22513, 22103, and portions of 22104, 21117, and 24. 359, otherwise known as grid 1719, block 4, parcels 16 through 12, and a portion of 11 and 15 and 17, respectfully of the City of Danville, Virginia, Zoning District Map. There a second. Uh, Mr. Buckner, discussion on the motion. Please call the roll. Reverend Campbell. Mr. Gilstrap. Aye. Mr. Jones. Aye. Vice Mayor Miller. Aye. Mr. Raleigh? Aye. Mayor Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Vogler? Aye. Mr. Buckner? Aye. Council, I apologize for getting confused earlier on this uh, agenda. <laughs> Mr. Attorney, I started to call you in advance of the meeting to see if we could take all these together. But you I knew we couldn't do that, but so oh, I just uh, didn't call you. I'd like to thank the council members for reading all of this, getting all the zeros and the dots and the hyphens, everything in order. I think it was very nicely done. Most especially, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Walden, and I'd like to also thank the neighborhood, the residents, for the way you handle all of this. I mean, this was a real, real good compromise, win-win, working together situation, and I'm just very proud of all of you, Mr. Walden, the neighbors, and everyone, for the manner in which you worked out this compromise. This is Danville at its best. So thank you all very much, and we look forward to uh, this project coming up. And uh, Mr. Gilley, I'm sure Vice Mayor and myself and others will be watching that traffic and seeing if we need that stop light or stop sign or caution light or something because it's going to be interesting. But again, um, more evidence of more growth in the city of Nando. So thank you all very much. Under communication, Mr. Manager. Uh, no report, thank you. Okay, Mr. Attorney. Uh, nothing this evening, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Madam Clerk. Nothing, sir. Please call the roll. Mr. Buckner? Yeah, I'd just like to uh, thank everybody from the Boys and Girls Club that were here tonight. And uh, just my hats off to them with a great job and service they provide for the youth of our community. Um, also, I would like to tell everybody and let everybody know that doesn't already know that the city's launched a couple of really nice uh, redos of our websites. Um, definitely check those out. And uh, happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Reverend Campbell? Mr. Gilstrap? Uh, yes, Mayor, uh, I think if uh, we get through in time tonight, I'm going to play the numbers 24358, <laughs> 24649, and 22513. You want some job. It's, uh, I, I thank Danville for growing Danville tonight. I think that was a, uh, a, a good thing to do. I like the, the, the compromise with the community. That was good. And uh, my congratulations to the uh, developer and to the community. 
I'm sure it's going to work out good for both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jones. Uh, to Dr. Paul Hamas and Ms. Hall and to Mr. Gould, thank you all so much for being here on a night, especially on a night when we were able to um, recognize the Boys and Girls Club. And I'm sure you all can say kudos to all they're doing. Mr. Mayor, before I came here tonight, just in Lynchburg, Dr. Paul Hamas, they're talking about closing down a youth club because of all the violence that's taking place at this club in, in Lynchburg. So kudos to the Boys and Girls Club, to the Board of Directors, and to our school board members. Also, Mr. Mayor, a former school board member is here. Ms. Wilson is here. We can ask her to stand. And Hello, Ms. Wilson. Okay. And beside her, Ms. Wilson, a former school board, beside her is a new pastor, uh, from Mr. Pastor Emmett Young from Lower Baptist. So we want to welcome you all as well. Okay. Today, my last comment today, council had the opportunity to go down to a ribbon cutting from one of our local, Ken Jones, Urban Fitness. And Mr. Mayor, it was just a, it's just great to see what's happening in the city of Danville. Exciting things are happening in the city of Danville. We hear, as Mr. Buckner just mentioned about our website, a lot of times people are complaining. All you have to do is go to their website. You have my personal number. Call us if there's things that you don't understand. But we really need to start talking and speaking more positive about our community. Every, almost every week we've seen different young people come before cancer. Week before it was the Girl Scouts. This week it was Boys and Girls Club. Our youth are watching us. And I hope and pray that everybody would join us as the weather's getting warmer and continue to look out for our young people and continue to support the endeavors of what's going on in our community. And Dr. Pohamas, you're absolutely correct. The school board and city council are working cohesively together and everyone needs to know that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Vice Mayor Miller. Yeah, the Boys and Gar Girls Club, just a wonderful organization. 100% of their students graduate. That's, that's phenomenal because, you know, it's not just a recreational place. They study, they make these kids study after school. They make them learn computer skills. Uh, it's just a, just a great organization. Uh, the, uh, again, uh, I know several, I can count several resident physicians and students. They always looking for rental. I mean, this is a great location. They can walk to the hospital in the morning. So I think your, your clientele is gonna be, I don't think people on Montague Street don't have to worry about the people that live there. Uh, it, it's, uh, you know, Averett College will also benefit. And finally, happy St. Patrick's Day. You know, I, I, uh, having a lot of Irish in my ancestry, I, I was wanting to do something like you do in Chicago and uh, dye the, you know, in Chicago they dye the Chicago River green, but I didn't think that'd play too well in Danville. It's sort of sensitive in the last year since we've had a gray river and taste in the water, but uh, uh, so I guess we'll just let that slide this year. But again, Duke Energy needs to step up. It's been, it was 13 and a half months instead of 14 and a half, but they've yet to do anything uh, substantial. Uh, just a drop in the bucket is all they've done. So we need to stay on their case. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rawley. Mr. Mayor, I, I look forward to um, the event tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock at High Street. Baptist Church, I think is going to be a great event and starting off of their 150th anniversary, but to have a state marker there, I think is going to be a great, great uh, thing for that church. Uh, and it is on the high street, isn't it? I tell you what, it sits up right on top. Uh, I'd also like to uh, thank uh, Ken Jones and Urban Fitness. That's a you don't realize how big some of those buildings are down there until you go inside. They really got a nice setup, three floors, very, very nice. And uh, a personal thank you. Uh, uh, if, if you ever have uh, some heart problems and you, you need an expert, we got one right here on council. Doc Miller, I appreciate you and your expertise and uh, thank you very much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Mr. Shanks? Uh, yes, I, I too, Mayor, would like to uh, thank the school board members for being here tonight and providing the additional information or the outline of the information that we have uh, yet to, to uh, go over with you again. Look forward to working with the school board and, and trying to, uh, to, to uh, make the improvements that are necessary for our school system to continue to operate in an efficient and uh, timely manner. 
Also want to say thank you to, uh, to Keith, Lowe, I mean, Keith Walden and good luck on, uh, on that development. It's, it's been, like uh, Ms. Vaughn said earlier, it's been a while since we've had a new development uh, of this type in the city and it's, it, it certainly could be an exciting project and wish you the best of luck and look forward to seeing that starting from construction. Also look forward to being at High Street tomorrow with, for the unveiling of the, the state monument, historic monument in the, uh, their anniversary celebration. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Vogler. Yeah, I'd first like to thank and recognize uh, Dolores Reynolds and, and Harold Garrison who are here tonight and who are here at pretty much every council meeting. And uh, for those who watch these meetings on television will probably recognize their faces. Uh, they're here at just about, if not all, uh, council meetings for as long as I can remember, and especially Dolores. Dolores was down here coming to these meetings before I was and before I was on council and attending these meetings. Um, and I think their batting average is probably near 1,000 in terms of attendance here. So I did want to recognize and, and thank them tonight. And I think that's something that, that we should recognize and, and admire and encourage others uh, to come. And I'm glad to see that we have such a such a good attendance tonight of people here. And as has been mentioned by some of my colleagues, we do have a new city website that has been totally revamped from top to bottom. And one of the cool things in it is the open data Danville uh, system that it is in it. It is something myself and others have really been uh, pushing for and advocating for for quite some time. And I'm really excited about this phase one that's available to the public that's going to have every line item, every dime, every dollar of the city's budget, the city's expenditures from top to bottom available to the public in a user-friendly system uh, that people can go in and compare year to year, department to department, and see where everything is. And I think that this is a great first step uh, and a goal that we should have in making Danville the most accessible and transparent city in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And I think today was a good first step in that regard and an exciting new system. Uh, and another thing that's exciting about it is that it's uh, the new, the city's website is very mobile uh, device friendly. And that's something, you know, people, uh, you know, all across our city, young and old, have these now, and they're using these. And this is becoming a larger and larger part of people's everyday lives. Uh, and that's why something I'd like to see, and I hope the council is able to, to have a discussion on this uh, here in the near future, is when someone's power goes out. Currently, you just have to call the automated phone number and you put it in. And, and I think that's something that should always be available. But I think we should also look into having alternate options for people. One of those would be a mobile device friendly website where people can go in and put their name and their address and enter that in. Very similar to the Fix It Danville program we have now uh, where people can report potholes and things of that nature. They put that in, it uploads it real time to a map where not only can uh, our employees see where power is out and been reported out, but the public can too. So they'll have an idea of what's going on in our city. Technology is a great thing. You have the world at your fingertips. I'm excited to see us taking advantage of this more, and I hope we'll have discussions about further ways that we can do that. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Mayor Saunders. Yeah, special thanks to the Boys and Girls Club for helping 250 children in our city. And they do that all the time, and they're making a lot of progress. Also, congratulations to Daniel Jeffers, or, uh, yes, who is the Youth of the Year for the Boys and Girls Club. Very impressive young lady, and we do wish her well, and she will go far, we know that. Ms. Wilson, it's always good to see you. Retired uh, teacher, principal, still active in the community, still involved, we're very, very proud of you. Former school board member, as Councilman Jones just said, you do so much and you're still doing it. So we're so glad to see you and keep on doing good things. And to Pastor Young, I believe, uh, welcome to Danville at the Pastor Law Baptist Church. Very pleased to have you. I just have one regret, sir. You are a Washington Redskins fan. But that's okay. You know, God love you and I do too, all right? <laughs> so thank you, sir. And also I want to say to uh, Ken Jones, Urban Fitness, congratulations. I saw that, sir. I saw that. I saw that, <laughs> Washington Redskins. Uh, to Ken Jones, Urban Fitness, uh, ribbon cutting this morning, a very successful event. I learned something this morning and I'd heard about it, but I really saw it this morning. You all may think that you're looking at Councilman Jones. You're looking at firefighter Ken Jones. Councilman Jones opened the Urban uh, Fitness Center this morning like twins. When they stood side by side this morning, they were like twins. So now I see why you all get confused. I really do. And um, I, too, want to wish High Street 
uh, happy anniversary, 150th anniversary, and I know it's going to be very well. The church is very, very historic, a lot of history there, have done so much, and we'll hear more about that tomorrow at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Thank you. Meeting adjourned.